Hi, this is Sue Merrick, and I'm speaking here with Kelly Swit. She is the Senior Director, Intelligent Edge Global Business Development Lead at Red Hat. Hi, Kelly. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. So Kelly, how is this latest infrastructure build out different than past build outs? Well, I mean, if you look at what's really happening in the infrastructure space, or when we talk about what's happening in edge, um, you know, you're really starting to see a, a great kind of um, awakening um, due to the, the many changes that are happening in the software industry around really evolving from what may have been more of an embedded hardware um, feel for the edge into something that is far more open and software defined um, across many industries, which is driving just a significant level of innovation for these organizations. And how do these advances in edge, or as some people say, multi-access edge compute, how do those impact the way applications are developed and deployed? Yeah, so when you look at, because the hardware is changing, because the, that bringing the software into these actual architectures, what you're starting to see plus the, the change in what's happening from uh, just connectivity, if you will. Um, what you're starting to see is that these organizations are starting to evolve their thinking on what they really need at their edge. So if we look at industrial as an example in the manufacturing floor, thinking differently about the fact that it's not just having uh, the robotic processing across the factory line anymore, but now they can actually bring um, at the, the workstation of the future, the data directly to the operators for them to think differently and make decisions much more quickly. So all of that is coming from the change around edge computing. Um, this isn't necessarily a new concept, but the architectures and the and the different people that are involved um, or, or vendors involved, excuse me, um, that is what's really kind of changing the way people think about the use of data and even starting to bring AI at the point of data origination, which is really interesting in comparison to where these industries have been in the past. And how do you simplify that process and make it easier to deploy at the edge? Well, I mean, when you think about it, in, especially here in the US, um, we have spent over a year listening to nothing but cyber attacks that have taken place. And when you think about the cyber attacks that have taken place, it is because there is um, a need for such a hardened kind of very restrictive firewall security access, thinking about how to manage the network. Um, the movement around shifting to what is coming um, next to the edge is starting to evolve the thinking around how to really harden um, the software, how to provide more real-time uh, security into the actual software stack. Um, and it's evolving the way that um, these organizations are thinking about their network and, and the security surrounding their network. Uh, one of the biggest pieces that we see uh, from our customers, and this goes across many um, industry verticals, um, is the fact that there is a need for um, autonomous operations. And when we talk about that, I think a lot of times, and, and I'm a former business executive myself, we think about the operators and how we automate their work. But what we're talking about now is thinking about um, what is more of the, the tech support, tech operations that may be within these facilities, that we're looking at how do you really provide a level of automation, something that the core IT team in the data center has been using for a couple of years, bringing that into these edge facilities in order to kind of provide much more autonomous um, operations around the actual IT that supports the growth and the money making uh, that takes place within the factory floors. Now you mentioned manufacturing as one vertical. How does the edge impact other industries um, and what is possible now that the edge is evolving? I mean, well, edge is kind of happening in every industry. I come with a, a heritage in financial services, which was probably the first consumers of edge. When you think about everything that happens in the market space, the quicker uh, the, the, the information or the transaction flows through, you know, the NASDAQ, um, the, the quicker that people can kind of make money, if you will, because uh, the faster the message, right, uh, the more margin uh, the individual institutions usually have. But when you look at um, the rest of the market, these edge environments have existed. 
and, and they exist in our daily lives. And I think sometimes we, we almost kind of are looking at edge as if it's something new and it's always been there. Uh, branch offices. So think about the brick and mortar. Every retail establishment you work, you walk into to, to shop. Uh, my personal favorite, Target, right? You walk into a Target and you don't even think about the fact that that's really like a location that has a significant amount of technology to really drive the behavior and the buying pattern that you have. And so we see retailers making big advancements in the way that they look at their point of sale devices, how they're actually thinking about that connection into their payment networks, which kind of connects into the financial system. Um, we see in hospitals, I think we're all kind of used to hearing about robotic processing for surgery. Um, but even beyond that, uh, there is work that we have done with a number of hospitals thinking about how do you really provide uh, direct access, real-time access into the imagery that may be happening, whether it's x-rays, CT scans, PET scans, et cetera, giving that immediacy of access of information to the healthcare provider at the point of them sitting next to you at the hospital bed and think about the level of service and kind of um, care you can receive as an individual when we arm these very talented people with the information as fast as possible. Uh, so we see many industries beyond kind of the traditional, I think we all think about, uh, that are all really starting to evolve the way that they think about uh, their systems that run these different facilities and how to kind of bring data closer to the actual end users. Now, how important is the ecosystem to the development of the edge? And what roles do curation or an orchestration play in this? Ecosystems are immensely powerful and coming from Red Hat and being um, our heritage is in open source, we understand the value of an ecosystem. Um, when you think about kind of how an ecosystem can really help shape what is the future of edge, um, you're bringing kind of the best talented minds from various organizations together. And that diversity of thought creates uh, brand new solutions that can drive um, significant innovation into um, the individual organizations. So part of what we're doing here at Red Hat is really looking at how we curate what is, um, what I think folks traditionally think of as hardware providers and software providers, and then traditional kind of OEMs and some of these industries verticals and trying to bring them together in a mosaic to provide um, a very different experience and um, value into our customers so that they can think differently about what may come next for them. Great. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me.